It's a very, very sad day to be an Arizona Coyotes fan because it's official. The sale of the Arizona Coyotes and relocation to Salt Lake City, Utah has officially been approved by the NHL Board of Governors. Thank you all so much for tuning in to the PHNX Coyotes podcast. Don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe wherever you get your podcasts. Leave us a five-star review. I'm Leah here with Craig. Danielle's behind the Mac. PD may or may not call in. He's... He's in mourning. Um, yeah. Craig, we all knew this day was coming, but it's still a sad day. It is. It's. It, I, I tried to capture some of that in, in my column today. I, I finally got a chance to listen to Todd Walsh, and I probably shouldn't have listened because that one really, <laughs> that one really my, got me. That one got me, Walshie. Well done. Uh, yeah. The National Hockey League is no longer a part of the Valley of the Sun, and that's a tough one. Um, obviously, they're exists the possibility of a return i do think a return is coming um we'll get to that in a minute you know what the the pieces are of that i, I know alex morello is starting to make the media rounds which you know what took you so long uh, it's, you've owned the team for five years and you're finally doing interviews maybe maybe this is a sign that he finally understands what he has to do to be a steward of this organization, but I don't want to go that far yet because there's so many, so many steps and there's so much work to be done to repair his image. But anyway, let's, let's get to the immediate news. Uh, Leah, I, we went, we went through the emotions so much last night. We talked to so many people, heard so many incredible stories. And I know we talked about this on the show, but it, it, it has stuck with me to today. Um, you just don't experience something like this in life. There's no way to prepare yourself for the relocation of a franchise. And I, I get it from a fan perspective too. Like it, it's a different experience for you than it is for me. I've been chronicling this team for way too long. I don't want to give away my age here. But you you know, you invest in so much. And that's what I tried to capture in the uh in the column today. You build so many relationships, right? And it, it wasn't always about just developing sources to get information. I've always said that my favorite part of this job is the relationships that I built. And it was mostly on the NHL beat because it's just a different field than anything else. It's not like the other sports that I've covered. There's a there's an openness. There it just feels different when you cover the National Hockey League. All those contacts, I'm not saying the contacts are going away, but like from a professional standpoint now with the Coyotes gone, like how how often am I going to talk to these people now because you got to shift. You got to move on. So yeah. it's, it's crazy to think about. That was something we even talked about last night. We were just up in the media room and we were saying, I'm just going to miss being at the rink and saying hi to everybody. There's so many people from staff of the team to security at Mullet Arena. Mm -hmm. Like all of those those touch points that you get to experience every single time you go to a game, every time you go to a practice, all of those are going away. And that's it's really, really sad. Um, and when I was driving home last night, I was thinking, wow, like even just getting to talk to everybody who we talked to, that was a place for us to naturally talk to people. And, you know, we're, you know, we're going to do our best to maintain the community that we've built, but it's just not that, that natural element anymore. And, you know, something yeah, that we, we don't have the gathering place. No. right? It's, yeah. And something that really stood out that you wrote in your column, and I even quote tweeted the column with this quote was, more than the results, the Coyotes experience was always about people. It was always about relationships. It was always about community. And that is something that we're losing on this day. Um, you know, what is a approved sale that the Board of Governors, like, bore me more with the press release, by the way. Um, <laughs> yeah, a bunch of just canned quotes. <laughs> Smith Entertainment Group, led by Ryan Ashley Smith, officially will... Uh, establish a franchise beginning the 2024-25 season in Utah 
And just for the details, effective at closing, the approved transactions or transaction will result in the Coyotes franchise transferring the totality of its existing hockey assets, including its full reserve list, roster players, and draft picks, and its hockey operations department to the Utah franchise. So a bit of a unique relocation situation um, because Alex Morello could still reactivate this team and we can talk a lot about that. Um, but yeah, just, I keep going back to it's a sad day. Sad. Yeah. Uh, again, we, we, we cited the stats, the NHL views this as only the second franchise to ever relocate twice. Of course it had to happen to us, right? <laughs> it's, I, I know you're feeling that it's, it's just so coyotes for, for this to be the next step. And listen, we, we, we've hashed over all the reasons why we got here so many times there, there, there's going to come a time when we have to look forward and we have to look at the viability, the possibility of hockey returning here and what those steps are, what it's going to take either for Alex Morello or somebody else. But I don't think anybody's there yet. How, how could you be? The official announcement just came out, even though we knew it was real. It's raw right now. It is, it is raw. Like Jeff Merrick put it best. This is a scar and it's, it's a scar that's going to be with you for forever. Yep. It absolutely is. Um, well, let's bring in Petey now to share his thoughts on the official news. Petey, how are you feeling right now? Well, I, I, I think you guys said it best. And I think this is just numbness. It's funny because people, a lot of people are wondering why I wasn't, like, I didn't cry last night. I wasn't tearing up. I wasn't all that emotional. I think I, I, I either I haven't realized it yet or I've been realizing it for 20 years. I, I'm not sure which. Um, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm truly numb. I mean, one, I'm exhausted. And you two, I don't know how the hell you guys how did. How many you hours did, did you sleep last night? I, I was, I'm on three. Okay. So. so between the three of us, nine hours of sleep. So I'm not including Danielle's us. five because that is just luxury right there. Yeah. Between yeah. the three of us, we got one good night's sleep. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm dizzy, and I, I know, unfortunately, I, not to not to complain because that's what we do. I'm just sitting. I've got another job to do, and I'm I'm in the middle of it right now. So I got a long, long road ahead of me tonight. Um, it, it's sad. It, this is this is. I read the I read all all of the things you guys just discussed about the press releases and so on, and, and it's, it just, I I just I don't like that the window is so wide open for Alex Morello right now. It, it, it bothers me a little bit that okay, well we're not really. We're not even really relocating. It's a brand new franchise. Just you're taking all of our stuff, but we still have ours dormant. Like I just, I, it's, I don't. One, I, I've never heard of such a thing in, in all of pro sports before. No, and, and it's I, the Coyotes, I, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. So why not? But but I just don't understand how that's going to work. And and, and I, I don't get. I, I don't get the reality of this. Actually, I, I don't think it's going to work because I, I don't know how the Tucson runners are going to coexist with his ownership of a team with his assets that don't belong to him anymore. I'm, I'm really confused. Um, I think this is going to get really muddy, but you know what? It could clear up really quick. If that land auction goes south or he doesn't get shovels in the ground, I, I have a feeling this isn't good. This may not last forever. This is the way mm. this situation lies out right now. And that, Craig, my question is this. Can he sell the AHL team then? If he doesn't get the arena, like, can he make more money by selling the AHL team? Does he, like, I'm, again, you're paying two, you, the, the, that Ryan Smith pays a billion dollars for just the NHL team with no no uh, access to the American League franchise. And now Morello can sell that in a year for more and yeah. make more. I, it's mind boggling to me. Yeah. I, I, like, we, we've talked already about the Roadrunners. I'm fascinated to see what happens, how that plays out. Because again, as I, as I reported, and of course, a lot of it was because you couldn't have those conversations yet. They had spoken to the stakeholders, you know, ASU, the city of Tucson, where they have a two year, two years more on their contract and would have to pay what I've been told at least north of $3 million to break that contract. Not that they haven't, you know, violated the terms of contracts in the past. Um, but also there's whether ASU wants them. And I, I have heard, and I'm just going to say this, it's, it, this is not rock solid yet, but I've heard there's a good chance the, the Suns G League team could be playing at Mullet Arena. So there may not be any space for the Roadrunners to play at Mullet Arena and maintain that connectivity with the Valley that they hope to do after, you know, giving away the NHL team. 
Yeah, and there's and you talk about ASU. There's more than just ASU hockey at play there too. I know that there's a lot of sports that you, that have been then rumored to be using the the mullet more than they have in the past. Whether it's wrestling, gymnastics, volleyball, there's all kinds of ASU activities that can take place in that space. They're not desperate to try to fill fill dates in that building by any stretch of the imagination. So. Again, I think that's a little bit premature, and, and all this happens so quickly. It's it just I, I don't think there's, there's a whiplash. lot of time yeah, really to is. sort through all of the the different things that could come from this. And I I, I know the next step, and we we saw it in Twitter that has been since deleted, is that uh, next day <laughs> the auction. Keep your eye on it. Keep your eye on it, Coyotes fans. Oh yeah, yeah. It's it, and I think the the point that still hurts the most is. Even just reading that, you know, the the transaction is transferring all the hockey to the br- – it's a new franchise. So basically yeah. it's like expansion-ish, except it's yep. one for but one. it's not. Then they're – yeah, it's not expansion, but it is. And then they're, it's a brand new franchise, but then they're just saying, <laughs> oh, here's – Here's years and years of investment of drafting, scouting, developing for a fan base getting emotionally invested for media talking about these people for years and years and years. And oh, yeah, no, we'll take it. But don't worry, because the Arizona Coyotes could be coming back. And everyone's response is, but we don't. That's the Arizona Coyotes we want. You're not fooling us. Yeah. They're not fooling anyone with this. That's the thing. And we mentioned that Alex Morello is starting to make the media rounds again, where you've been for the past five years. Now you're going to try and sell this idea that you're the guy to bring expansion here. Well, you didn't need to bring expansion here. You had a team here. You had so many (laughs) chances to make this happen. And you're going to, are you really going to try and sell this message? Are we going to hear, well, we did this in the interest of the players when we we know all the things that the players were saying about how they were treating. Are you really trying to sell this message right now? I'm curious what he's going to say in that news conference. And when I sit down with him afterward, I have a lot of hard questions for Alex Morello and I can't believe that they're oblivious to to his public image right now in this market. Yeah, it, it, it's, it is mind boggling. It's great. It is just like I don't know how you back out of this one. And if he's, if I, I know he's not, I scrolling doom scrolling Twitter today. I, I really <laughs> doubt he is. So I, I doubt he knows. But but Junior knows. Like they have to know they're up against it here. Like their 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 announcement today that yeah, well the players we felt bad, but bullshit, you felt no, bad, you but you didn't. You absolutely didn't Never feel bad. Yeah, I don't think they ever cared. Didn't no. cross their minds. It was the league said, "Get a building, you leave," and you didn't get a building. We're leaving. I mean, it's there's no there is no thought to this other than about himself. I'm sorry. There is no. Oh my gosh, what about that Cross family? They just bought, built a new house. You know, I think it would be better if they moved to Salt Lake. What? Like, this is insane. Oh. I, and when we, it, it felt like, and I know if you haven't seen what chaos today, make sure you tune in because the Arizona sports guy was on there talking about the, the handing over the banner <laughs> and, and they accused him the flat out. They said, well, basically I stole it. And he said, well, no, he said, well, no, it's more like looting. And they're like, well, <laughs> it's not, not any well better. Played, Matt. Well not played. any better. And so this is what I feel like with Utah. They're not really stealing our assets. They're just kind of looting them. Like that's exactly the, the, what made me think of like, they're not stealing them. They're just kind of taking our assets. And it's just so maddening. You're going to put a jersey on a different player and call them the Coyotes. It's just absolutely crazy to oh me. Oh, my gosh. And, oh, and, so and I'm, trying, the, I'm trying not to cry. And then in the release, uh, it's like, in addition, the board approved a plan that renders the Coyotes franchise inactive with the right to reactivate if owner Alex Marlowe has fully constructed a new state-of-the-art facility appropriate for an NHL team within five years. It's like, oh, well, you know, if, if Alex, you know, if, if yeah. he follows the rules, like... I don't know. It just it, it feels so childish to me that like it's Animal just House. so childish. Leah, do you know Animal so House? careful, right? And which, which again yes. goes back to the legal side of this. He yes. probably had him over a barrel, and this is yep. all they could do. They had to make these sorts of concessions, but also like, and, and we're we're gonna I, we're, I'm gonna see how this plays in the room when they hold that news conference tomorrow here in Arizona at 11:30. Buddy, read the room. Read the room. Like you can't just, oh, you know, it's it, it, it's going to be just fine. He's committed, he cared about the players. Like you're not selling any of that. Nobody, I mean, nobody, nobody. is buying that message. 
No, and it's funny, Craig, when you say that, it's not national media, it's not local local media, it's not the fan base, it's not the players, it's not the league, it's not media personnel, it's not local politicians, and local businessmen. I don't know who he's selling the message to. I, I guess his family, because they're the only ones that listen to him. So maybe he's selling it to them, because I don't know. Like, can you imagine the about face he is going to have to face to actually make this happen? Oh. Like, like he's got a he has got a grovel, and I don't see Alex Merlo Sr. as a groveler. I, he's right. got to grovel to a lot of people. Like, but he's going to he's going he, yeah. to have to transform into Gandhi to remake his image in this market. With well, all I'll that's say going that on here, there is a Gandhi in this market, and a lot of people really like him. <laughs> Just saying. So if you want to you want to build bridges quickly that are burnt down, there's a, one guy I can think of. Yep. And Craig, no, it's not you. I know you were thinking it was you because oh, you went to prep I, school. Okay. Sorry. But it it would be one Shane Doan. Oh, if you yeah. want to you you He's want okay. people to get on board, number nineteen, man. I, and you, you you open a lot of doors with him and a lot of positivity. I do not see a marriage between the Rebels and, and, and Shane Doan. No. Nope. Um, by the way, Darren Drager just tweeted, sources say Ryan Smith and SEG execs have met with Coyotes players and staff in Arizona. Meeting went very well following the NHL's approval of relocations to Salt Lake City. Yeah. So, I mean, great first impression from Ryan Smith flying down to Arizona to immediately meet with the team um, just within the hour after it's official. So, I guess, good. Si- you know, we, we don't, obviously don't know Ryan Smith. We've never met him. Um, but for the sake of... All of the hockey people involved who are part of this relocation, like, I hope that this is a really good ownership situation for them. That's the thing for these players. And it's not just the players, right? It's staff. Like, we still don't know the fate of some of the staff yeah. members, some of whom have reached out to me, you know, since they had this meeting. We'll see. Um, it sounds like they're all going to be OK for the immediate future, like to the end of the fiscal year, basically, which is right around that auction. Um, but. They don't know their fate beyond that. There's 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 a chance, I guess. We'll we'll see how that all plays out. But for the players in particular, and I know players make a lot of money. We've said this before, right? So it's not like it's as hard on them. And and, and they'll all tell you that. that. They're all looking around seeing the impact on the staff. But there is an impact on the players as well with all that they've had to deal with here. It'd be nice to see them taken care of. And, and that was... Uh, Again, I'm not going to name names because I, I I caught some people on the side today at breakup day, and they talked about that very thing. That nobody nobody's blaming the market or any of the other factors here for what went south in Arizona. They believe like like they saw it last night. They believe in this fan base. They love living here. They just need an owner who behaves like an NHL owner should behave. Yeah, I, I can't imagine the, the, the awakening these players are going to have and the differences in, in going to Salt Lake City. And again, not the, not the community, not the weather, not all those things. I mean, in how they're treated by the ownership. I, I, and again, I, I, I joked about it yesterday that when they get, when these guys go to practice every single day in Arizona, every single day in Arizona, they go to practice, they change. It's called the change room where they get out of the street clothes and put on their workout gear. From there, they get into golf carts and take a golf cart through parking lots across a street to the arena. You know how many teams do that in the National Hockey League? Well, you've got it. None. Like, it's just ridiculous. And and when they heard about that, I, I we laughed. We said, can you see Phil Kessel in the rain going in a golf <laughs> cart thinking this is really cool after winning a couple of Stanley Cups? And again, those little things. They're all gone now. They're all gone. And the other thing, Craig, we were talking about this ownership. When the, I, I don't know if I mentioned the last night because I don't remember last night anymore. But when we were talking about the players throwing <laughs> Did their still stick, last night? Because yeah. you're talking about all, all the assets. You talk about all the assets and all these players are throwing these three, four, five hundred dollar sticks over the glass one after the other. And I swear if Junior would have been in the building, he would have the calculator out. Okay, Ingram, that's one. Uh, well, that's two that's three and we'll put that invoice in your stall in the morning like i just can't imagine oh, that the yeah. bean counters of the morella group would be doing if they sell all of those sticks going into the crowd which will also help goodwill and your fan base but that's not really important it's about the cost on dollars <laughs> oh boy uh well we want to uh, celebrate the coyotes tenure in arizona mm. um, we want to celebrate coyotes 1.0 for until slash if there's ever a 2.0 <laughs> yeah. um, and we're going to do yeah. that next Wednesday, April 24th at four peaks doors at six. It starts at seven. Is this going to be a full celebration of the coyotes, um, a celebration of the coyotes community? And we invite everybody, fans, staff, former players, current players, anybody who wants to come. This is a celebration of the coyotes community and 
tickets. They're $5. All ticket proceeds go to the Arizona Kachinas. Um, so not only can you support youth hockey, but you can come celebrate, have some four peaks, eat some great food and just be among the community. We'll have, you know, speakers, we'll have slideshows, photo slideshows, video slideshows. Um, there's just going to be a lot. And I, and I really think that this will be a great opportunity, you know, once the dust has settled to come together and, and celebrate this team as a community. So we invite everybody to come. There's also an option to just make a donation to the Arizona Kachinas if you're willing or able to do that as well. Um, I'm dropping the link to buy tickets in the chat right now so you can do that. Um, but we hope to see everybody out at Four Peaks next Wednesday. It's going to be a blast. Before we move on, Leah, I, I did get a, a text this this morning from someone who I, uh, works in the offices that I know a little bit. And they said, hey, we heard about your thing. Are we invited? Can we go and yes. give us more information? I'm telling you, there are there are a lot of um, Arizona Coyote staff members that are interested in this and being part of a community, too, because I think they felt it last night. So yeah. I'm really looking forward to this event. and. And uh, I hope Four Peaks is ready because get some, get there's some, our, yeah, there's, there's get some already, extra, open right. up some space on the patio. We already have 50. We know 50 are coming already. 50 yeah. people. And they'll probably it's going to be from there. It's, yeah, it's going to be amazing. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. Open staff, up the patio. if you're watching, please yeah. come. Coyote staff, come on out. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, I, I said it last night. I made some money on BetMGM. Listen, last Coyotes game, you think I was going to take the Coyotes money line? I did, and I won on huh. BetMGM. And the NHL playoffs are about to start. We have NBA playoffs, MLB regular season, WNBA starts soon. It's all happening. So you want to make sure you're betting on all of these games over at BetMGM. Sign up for BetMGM. Use the bonus code PHNX. Place your first BetMGM Sportsbook wager through the BetMGM Sportsbook mobile app for at least $10, and you receive up to $1,500 in bonus bets. If the bet loses, check out the show notes for full details. And now listen to Shane talk about the disclaimer. Available in the U.S. Call 877-8-HOPE-NY-467-369-NEW York. Call 1-800-327-5050, Massachusetts. 21 plus only. Please gamble responsibly. Call 1-800-NEXT-STEP-ARIZONA. 1-800-BETS-OFF-IOWA. 1-800-981-0023. Puerto Rico. First bet offer for new customers only. Subject to eligibility requirements. Bonus bets are non-withdrawable. In partnership with Kansas Crossing Casino and Hotel. See BetMGM.com for terms. U.S. promotional offers not available in New York, Nevada, North Carolina, Ontario, or Puerto Rico. And then make sure you check out Desert Financial Credit Union, the official credit union of PHNX. For more than 84 years, Desert Financial has been Arizona's largest, most trusted local credit union dedicated to creating exceptional experiences by giving back to the community and providing financial solutions that make lives better. Their financial team are ready and committed to helping you find all of your financial solutions that are tailored to help you achieve real goals and dreams. Check, check them out for your checking account, your saving account, your mortgage account, loans, credit cards. And for Stan Wilson, the equipment manager of the Arizona Coyotes. Maybe you can check into retirement because <laughs> might, today might be a really good time. So make sure you check out Desert Financial Credit Union. When you open a free checking account online, you get $200 in bonuses. Get started today by visiting desertfinancial.com slash 200. All right. Um, let's right. let's uh, quickly read through some of these uh, super chats. Uh, we'll just do a few of them. Um, Connor Smith said, Leah's comment from the last studio show stuck with me describing feeling of taking for granted that the Coyotes play tomorrow puts things into perspective. Yeah, that's a tough pill to swallow for sure. The Extra Shift podcast, who has sent us a super chat, I'm pretty sure every show since thank this you, news thank dropped, you, thank you for the support. Um, more sure this was an NHL money grab. They have no issue with Alex Morello. They make money off moving. They get an extra franchise without waiting on expansion and can still get that going forward. We'll uh, we'll hear from Gary Bettman tomorrow. Yeah, so we'll, we'll, we'll see. Yeah, um, Angela said thank you, Craig, Leah, PD, Patrick, Danielle, and Raz, and all for th this passionate community you've created. I'm so grateful for it and all you do. Thank you, Angela. Really appreciate you, uh, Jamie Eisner. <laughs> In my opinion, Bettman did what he could to get $1 million sale done and unchallenged ASCP with expectation Morello based on gestures at everything. <laughs> Won't get to finish line. <laughs> yeah, that's a good take. Um, Roger said, thanks for everything you've done, guys. Looking forward to your next ventures. I'm just glad I got to see Coyote's hockey in Australia. Cheers. Well, thank you for tuning in yeah, that's from a Australia. Good memory. That's yeah. a good memory. Amazing memory. Ty said, can't wait for that interview, Craig. Don't let AM off easy and that sit down i don't think you plan to nope. and moose tree said we need either donor biz if morello wants to even try and save face with this franchise or biz as a mascot with howard <laughs> yeah 
Oh, you're absolutely right. Well, this morning was uh, Coyote's breakup day, which the word feels a little bit more sure apt today than any other day. Yeah, because people in the past were like, breakup day? That's kind of a weird... Well, not today. Yeah, not today, today it's literally... Today they, they broke up with the entire city. Yep. Um, and, you know, it, we had the opportunity. It felt, we talked mostly to young guys, which yeah. is interesting. Um, Gunther, Doan, Cooley... They're all good too today. Yeah, They're all good. All phenomenal. The mm-hmm. full interviews. Ingi. Yeah, Ingi. Ingi was money today. Uh, yeah, we'll have we have Although some clips. He grumbled about having to come to the. Particularly, he, he threw might have shade. targeted a certain reporter. Yes, at Craig himself. Um, walked yeah. out, said, "What is this, Toronto?" <laughs> so funny. He's he's an amazing yeah, interview. He is. But um, incredible. Yeah, I think just talking to those young guys, the thing that stands out the most, once again, and we've said this every single day for the last week, is what we're losing in this young core. And especially what Logan Cooley said, you know, someone asked him what's been clicking for him in the second half of the season. And he said, oh, you know, like just really building chemistry with Gunther. Right. right. It's like, oh. That's what we wanted to hear. Because he really felt like he felt like the light bulb went on the second half of the season. And and Andre was saying that all along. We're going to see that. He's going to make progress. But it certainly helped to have Dylan Gunther riding alongside. And man, those two built some chemistry. (laughs) And yeah. I, I don't I don't want to go there anymore because they can make magic. Like if, if he can make the sort of strides in year two in the NHL that Dylan Gunther made in season two, yikes, that combination is terrifying. Yeah, and one of the things you talk about with the way those two players play, and you look at what Dylan Gunther did a year ago, and one of the things Craig and I we talked about his pace and his he he could with when he had room on the power play, he was extremely dangerous. But this year the pace changed. And when he got that time in the American League and the game, I think slowed down for him a little bit, and he was able to adjust and, and improve and develop. And when he came up here, he was lights out for for mm-hmm. for Cooley. Cooley is a guy that really relies on on making plays in tight areas, tight spaces with his hands. And, and and that's difficult to do transitioning from college to the NHL. Like those high skill guys, that they, they don't have the room that they used to have. So I think it's I think this year of development for for Cooley playing at this pace, I think you're going to see him next year take that. I do believe he's going to take that stride, Craig. And I do believe these two as a duo and a tandem next year in Salt Lake City are going to be extremely dangerous. And I'll go this far. I'll say these these two are going to be one of the most exciting tandems when you get back when we go preview the league and the good thing about this is there's no receipts because we won't have a show but 10 to 15 <laughs> games into the season people are going to be talking about Cooley and Gunther together mark my words right now Cooley and Gunther are going to be a big deal in the first first dozen games next year and I'm curious what they do around him we, we already know that they have to spend like 20 million dollars just to get to the floor next season and some of that will be with their own restricted free agents but they, they they have to make moves in free agency I'm curious how it'll work with Bill's plan you know his long stated plan of building slowly building the right way, not jumping the gun and adding players that maybe are premature. Um, so I don't know what you do to fill in around because when we talk about some of those other prospects like Mavlam or Connor Geeky or the, the Russians, they're, they're not here yet. I'm, I'm not sure they're ready yet. So next season is not the time to be trying to get into the playoffs. Sorry, that was me kicking over my water bottle. <laughs> I've had two hours of sleep. Um, but... At the same time, you're moving into a new market, right? Ryan Smith wants to make a splash. I'm guessing he wants to make a splash, win these fans over right away. So we'll see how those two plans marry. This, this, It's been a problem with the Coyotes in the past, right? Ownership steps in and says, hey, we need to make a splash right now. We need to win right now. Does that fit with the plan or not? Can they find a way to marry those two things? Yeah, but the, the difference here is, though, and, and the big difference here, Craig, is money. Yeah. Because it, the, this team, when you look at the, what the roster situation is like for a season from now, having no defensemen locked up and they've got a few forward slots as well, they need players and they need players to make a lot of money because they got to get to the floor. So in the past, you've looked at some of the deals they've made for, you know, Louis Erickson and Jay Beagle and guys that were just filling in or are getting bad contracts like Andrew Ladd and, and things that they had done to change. This team isn't getting bad contracts anymore. Yeah. Um, I, it's going to be interesting. I, I think you still have to put the premium on the development and the young players, meaning I think they need to get the opportunities. I think they need to continue to develop. Having said that, I, I don't think you swing and hit a Taylor Hall like you did or years Steve ago. Or Stamkos, right? Who's yeah. available? <laughs> I, I don't know if that mix as well. Doesn't make sense. But, but I think there are some, if you go into, like we talked about Tyler Toffoli at the time of the Taylor Hall deal, guys like that, that are still... This team has continually got, you know, 30, 35 year old free agents, and that's the direction they go. This team can do different now because of the yeah. money. So I think you can supplant it a little differently and build the roster differently. This could be a dangerous team because 
because when you looked at Seattle, their young talent is still young. I, I don't think they're, they, matter of fact, Seattle, some of their guys they haven't even drafted yet. Let's, let's face it. They're not there yet. The Arizona Coyotes, young talent is starting to play. And, and this could be, this is one of those franchises where you look at what Vegas shot to the playoffs and, and to the Stanley Cup playoffs immediately. I don't think Utah is going to be a team in the Stanley Cup playoffs next season. I'm not saying that, but I am saying they can take major strides when you take this young core that they have now and supplant it with a few high end, high ticket free agents, both on the back end and up front. The defense is going to be more important to be honest. And if they do that, Craig, this is a team that honestly, they can make the playoffs. I mean, this is a team that can, they, maybe they're teasing with 10th to 7th uh, throughout the season, but this is a team that could make the playoffs, not ready to make play with the big boys, but this is a team that can make the playoffs uh, a season from now. And I would not say that if they were staying here in Arizona, because I think the financial plan would be different. All I'll say is if you are a Salt Lake City hockey fan, you are inheriting something very it's exciting. intriguing. It's yeah. really intriguing. I still think Again, and it, when I when I look at this, and I, I was having this discussion with Nick Katsaniku who, from NHL.com, who was at Breakup Day today. When you look at this system, and, and I don't know what Logan Cooley and Dylan Gunther are going to be yet, but do you see those elite pieces that we've seen on Cup winners before, right? Whether it was Chicago or Pittsburgh or Tampa, you, you know what I'm talking about, right? Like the, those yeah. super elite players. Yeah. Do they have that yet? I'm not sure if they have that yet, and that part of that's just lottery luck, right? The Coyotes never have any lottery luck, or now yeah. Salt Lake has had that, any lottery luck in the past. If they could, if they add Please one of those no. pieces over the next two drafts, Please no. Yeah, that, and that's it, Craig. That's the difference. That is the difference right now. It's not Kucherov, Pasternak. It's not those guys yet. It's not Matthews. It's not McDavid. Uh, we like Cooley and Gunther a lot. They're really good players. They're A level, All Star type players, but they're not generational elite. Um, and players in this league, not yet, at least. And, and when we're talking about some of the names that, you know, McKinnon, McDavid, and the guys that help you get to the promised land, um, even Jack Eichel, who was, was right there behind McDavid, it, it was, was an extremely good player, and he helped Vegas get over the hump. I, this team doesn't have that yet, and that's not to diminish anything that Cooley and Gunther have done or, or may do in the future because maybe they uh, aspire to that. But right now, they haven't had that number one or two overall pick that you go, He's the guy. They don't have Macklin Celebrini yet. Yeah. Yet. Don't say that. <laughs> don't say that. Yeah, but they, they don't have Nathan McKinnon. They're the, you you right. look at the players that can yes. – the difference makers, right? That's yes. that's how Nick put it today. The difference makers. Do they have those yep. guys? I'm not sure yet. We'll find out maybe with those two guys. We don't know about a lot of their prospects, but they didn't get that pick where you say, oh, yeah, that guy at number one is obviously that guy. Well, speaking of Logan Cooley and going back to last night after the game, after the team saluted the crowd, season ticket holders got to go on the ice with the team and the players were out there for a very long time. But the two guys who were the last to leave the ice were Josh Stone, who is a chip off the old block, and Logan Cooley himself. Mm -hmm. um, so earlier today at breakup day, we asked Logan Cooley, you know, just what that experience was like on the ice with Coyotes fans, and here's what he had to say. Yeah, it was emotional. It's, um, you know, kind of my first time ever doing something like that, and just the fans have meant everything to me, and obviously everyone on this team just with their support throughout the season. Um, you know, you talk about us players, it hasn't been easy, but it hasn't been easy on them either. They've, you know, been through as much as we have, and um, you know, th this is people's lives here and, um, you know, what they love to do. And obviously coyotes are a big part of that. So it's, it's unfortunate, it's sad. And, uh, you just tried to give back as much as possible. I have to say just from being someone who's lucky to have met Logan Cooley on draft day mm -hmm. to have talked to Logan Cooley today. First of all, he's such a good kid. We've had yeah. such good interactions with we him. Have. There's a story from Australia that stands out, um, as well, but I, that was just a really empathetic response. It was. You know, just acknowledging the, what it means to the fans. And I think that he clearly saw that by staying on the ice as long as he did last night. So. Yeah, we got that really from all the young guys. There's, Dylan Gunther was amazing. They're wise beyond their years. Yeah, yeah. Just, I wasn't that articulate or thoughtful when I was that age. I really wasn't. So it's going to say part yesterday. What's that? Nothing. I was going to say you weren't that thoughtful and articulate yesterday. Thank you. Talk That's about when you were probably young. true. <laughs> when <laughs> you were young. I don't know if anybody saw Craig around midnight, we'd start to question oh. it. Because <laughs> he was a toddler kicking that damn table. 
<laughs> that's true. <laughs> I forgot about that. Holy moly. I was having fun. You you that's guys good. didn't even see the last one. I was pushing it right near the end of the show and you guys didn't even notice. So. <laughs> we were it, like, I mean, it wasn't any was fun without you guys. was questionable sounds at the end of the show. So uh, I don't think you can call <laughs> Craig childish I plead the, I plead when you're making myself. bathroom noises on the show. Did that happen? <laughs> Good lord. <laughs> Might have. I don't, I don't oh even remember. I don't remember what was live and what was off camera last <laughs> night. <so. laughs> um, okay, well, we'll move on. And we, we mentioned that we got the chance to talk to Connor Ingram. Again, these full interviews will be available later today on our PHNX Sports YouTube channel. I highly recommend watching them all. They're phenomenal. But the, the interview with Connor Ingram really stood out as well. It's really rare that we get him on camera. He doesn't love the spotlight. Um, but he's so articulate. He's so well-spoken. And he was just phenomenal today. And he, he joked, I was dying, that he gave the Coyotes a win in their last game at Gila, their last game at Mullet. And if you recall, he was in net for the Predators yes, uh, yes, at Gila yes. of Arena and the Coyotes stormed back from behind to win that one in thrilling fashion. Uh, so good little joke from him. But again, check it out later today on the on the YouTube channel. Um, but we asked Connor Ingram about, you know, just the experience in Arizona mm-hmm. as a whole. So here's what he had to say. I think the last month or so you kind of see it um you know everyone says hockey belongs in the desert and i think the way this community has responded to this shows that and i think that there is a a base here that can work if um if you have the right situations going on and i mean hockey's growing here every day when we're at the ice den there's there's kids out there skating and they're having fun so i mean i think it's a sport that people can get behind and people here seem to really enjoy it i like he says, I think it could work here under the, the right circumstance. Mm-hmm. We all know yeah. what they're talking about. We yep. all know what they're talking about. Yep. And I think we all really believe that. Mm-hmm. Really yes. Do. Yep. I, I think the NHL believes it most importantly, right? More than what we believe, the NHL believes it. So So let's hope they follow through, but... Yeah, Maybe. like in, in do an about face for how you've handled yourself thus far, like literally a 180 from how you've, you've operated in yeah. this market so far, or just move on and let somebody else have a crack at it because people care about hockey. It was pretty apparent last night, both in the atmosphere, in the arena, and all the reactions that we got. People care about hockey here. So if you're not going to do it that way, if you're not going to do it the way you need to do it, do us a solid. Step aside and let somebody else have a crack at it. Yep. Do people say give us do us a solid anymore? That's like super old, isn't no, it? That's that okay. was cool. Yeah, he says you you're on the <laughs> cool playground with your it, bell bottom. Like ten years dated. Yeah, ten <laughs> years, but he, that's also okay. on the playground. All right, that's enough. But can we mute him now? <laughs> um, I feel like we need we need a we need some humor, oh. some positivity, and Connor Ingram gave it to us. Well, Craig teed him up. So <laughs> this this you is just a palate. Yeah, this is a palate cleanser. So the end of Cotter Ingram's whole availability. And you know, some of it was like really emotional, really serious talking about his personal struggles. Yeah, and- like being nominated, we, we nom- our chapter nominated yeah. him for the Masterton yeah. because of what he's been through with, with his mental health. And yeah. so we got through all of this <laughs> and talking about the market and how he's progressed as a player too. Let's not, let's not ignore that either. He got an opportunity this year and, and by and large took advantage of it and proved that he's not just a, a regular NHL goaltender. He's a good regular NHL goaltender. So Kudos to Connor Ingram uh, and going all the way back, kudos to Kevin Woodley for tipping us off to that way back when that this guy might be a guy to take a look at. At the end of the interview, they were, I think Jeffrey cut it off yeah. or Dave Lockett cut it off. I can't remember which one of them. Um, they, they were about to exit and I said, can I ask you one more question? And Is the, I, whole, and I is, is the question on camera as well or is it just his answer? Um, I think it's just his answer. Okay. I, I think. I don't remember. Again, four hours of sleep, but yeah. The, so here's the last I did question. I yeah. did ask Connor Ingram who was wearing brown, sand colored crocs. Maybe green like um army green. Oh, okay. So you thought they were green. Okay, see that well, shows how bleary eyed I was this morning. <laughs> your glasses have been yeah, broken they, for yes, a week. Yes, I did sit on my glasses <laughs> several days ago. So I'll just truth be told, yeah. I I did I did <laughs> If you were looking at me, if you thought I was looking at you kind of funny while you were talking to me last night, it's because my glasses are broken, so (laughs) sorry. I'll I'll have new ones by Monday. So at any rate, I asked Connor Ingram, did Crocs come back in style? (laughs) Can I ask one more question before you go? Fire away. Are Crocs back in fashion? (laughs) Crocs never left. (laughs) Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. These are supposed to be my indoor ones, but... 
that was like, Crocs never left. That, Crocs that was, never I, left. What a goes, great line. Then he goes, these are my indoor Crocs. <laughs> yeah, he did Wait, say these are my indoor Crocs. <laughs> he nailed it. That's a t-shirt. Crocs never he left. He is, he's a beauty. And this is the other side of this, aside from all that we're losing on the on the ice, right? With with all the talent that's coming up here and the possibilities for this franchise. Again, I said it in my column. The thing I'm going to miss most is the relationships. And when you meet someone like this, who, again, d- doesn't like it. It reminds me in some ways of Ray Whitney, who never liked being in front of the camera. But then anytime you got him in front of a camera or a recorder, he was so damn good that you're like, wait, do, do you not understand this? If you don't want us to interview, you just be terrible. Just just give cliches and you can cut all this off. But he can't do it. He's just so thoughtful and so funny and so personable. I'm going to miss that. Connor Ingram is he, he's now on the list of my favorite coyotes. Yeah, he does love to roast me. <laughs> but on my list of favorite coyotes in, in terms of interview, he's on the all interview list. He's he's made it. He, he's arrived. But he, but he doesn't want to talk to you. But, but he doesn't want to talk to, 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 talk to anybody. But, he's but the then, best he, then he always does and says funny That's things amazing. like walking through the hallway last night on the way back for interviews. And here's Jake from State Farm. <laughs> <laughs> Another classic. That's he's a good so line. good. He's That's so good. good. He's yeah. So funny. funny. Another another guy that we'll have to when we do our Salt Lake City primaries. Another guy we need to talk about because I think not only is he a character and that people will like him and his story, and I think they need to know his story so yeah. that they can embrace him in that community. But he's a hell of a goaltender. And yep. he was putting up all-star numbers at the all-star break, and he was one of the leaders in shutouts for the entire season in this league. And I, I think he can go more. I think he's got a higher ceiling. I think the bar can get even higher for this player and this kid. But to your point, Greg, this is where it gets hard because these people and these connections and these personalities, I, I, I don't know if, if for us to rebuild that, Ugh. even if they came back – Two years from now, three years from now, even to rebuild all of the things. Like Leah said, she was there when Logan Cooley got drafted. He's yeah. Leah's face was there in the draft floor. So when she comes into the locker room at development camp, familiar face. When she see, he serves her again on the first day of training camp, oh, I know her. And, and that, we, we we won't have that again. Like we, it, we, It's so hard to think that we won't have these connections with these players personally anymore. And that's, that's for me, is what's the most difficult about seeing these players leave is, is how much we fostered those relationships and became part, part yep. of the media that surrounded these guys. And I'm going to miss that. Yeah. And by the way, if, if we have any Salt Lake City listeners, um, Connor Ingram did reveal that he is a huge Salt Lake City fan, um, actually stops there on his drive back from Saskatchewan because, of course, why wouldn't you drive some from Saskatchewan? I mean, they have a dog. That's why. So I more power to him. Darcy Kemper used to do the same thing because you don't want to fly your dog because the airline industry is hell. Mm-hmm. So they always stop in Salt Lake City and he's a big fan. Yeah. So just know that your goaltender is going to love living there. Yep. Absolutely. Uh, well, no more Coyotes games to go to, unfortunately. Sorry to just with the dagger there. But I will say the Suns playoff games are just around the corner. And I looked on Game Time earlier today. There are Suns playoff tickets right now on Game Time. $88. $76. $67. That is a bargain to get into a playoff game down at footprint. So make sure you get those tickets now over at game time. You can also grab D backs tickets there all summer long because game time is now the authorized ticket marketplace of major league baseball. And if you've never used game time, make sure you use the code PHNX for $20 off your first purchase. Take the guesswork out of buying tickets with game time. Download the game time app, create an account, use code PHNX for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply again, create an account and redeem code PHNX for $20 off. Download game time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. And then make sure you swing by America's thirst stop, snack, snop, and gas. Snack, snop, snack, stop. <laughs> that's Sorry. three hours of sleep talking. Buddy, I'm just barely getting <laughs> Actually, that's and, just a normal Circle K ad read from you. <laughs> yeah, for me. I got I got marbles on my mouth. I'll spit them out right after this. We have thirst stop, snack, stop, and gas stop. Join their um, free membership pro- program. I swear to God, Circle K might fire me. Uh, their membership program, it's free and it's called the Inner Circle. And what do you get? You get 25 cents off per gallon on your first five Phillips. You get three cents per gallon on every gallon after that. And you get sixth item free on several of their best items, including their pizza, their coffee, their ice cold fountain drinks. Join the Inner Circle for free. I did it. Leah did it. Craig could do it, but I'm not sure he knows how to use his phone. Yeah. We use it for free by downloading the Circle K app today. Terms and conditions apply at participating locations. Visit circlek.com for details. All right. Um, All right. Is there anything that you want to talk about from that or not really? Not okay. Really. Um, 
Petey, I know you wanted yeah. to talk about Paul Bissonnette's comments. Oh. What's well, interesting TNT. because here, here we sit there and we we get concerned when we say we, I mean me, that oh my gosh, what if what if somebody tells Alex Morello what I'm saying and 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 Alex Morello Jr. and they're going to get, get mad at me because good grief, we don't want that. Well, lo and behold, we don't need to worry about that anymore because the the Paul Bissonnette, who's got a, a little, little bit larger audience and following <laughs> than I do, he said it exactly what needed to be said. And from a player's perspective, it's funny because when we talk about Paul Bissonnette, and we know what his following is like, and and uh, you know what he what he is and his personality is online. But but Paul's a smart guy. Yep. And sm- smokes very sp- uh, business very purposeful in what he says, and he he said that for a reason. And he is he's part of the player community. He's part of the player union. He's fighting for the players, and he wants to be a voice for the players that can't say what he can in a place and in a, in a forum that he can and can say it in. And he basically came out and said, "This owner stinks, and I hope they get a team back. I love it there, and, and Paul Bissonnette does love it here. He lives here, loves it here. But did you notice he backed away from the franchise? Did you see him on TV this year? Hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, um. So his comments." I, I don't know if Alex Sr., because we keep say, saying about how aloof he is on what's going on around in the media. Alex Jr. caught that. There is no doubt about it. That blew up all over all social media today because Paul Bissonnette kind of told it what, like it is. This team needs better ownership if they're going to proceed in the future. Yep. And on, on the note of Alex Morello and, and his relationship with the players, you're, you're going to be hearing that message that, you know, this was out of concern for the players. And in fact, he's probably saying it right now on 98.7. There's follow-up questions that that have to be asked to that. I'm not sure if they're being asked or not because I'm not listening to that. Obviously, I'm live right now, but there are always follow-ups. You can't just let someone give a response and then move on to the next question. you got to follow up, especially when what you hear doesn't jibe with what you know to be true. If you're saying that you're this was out of concern for the players and I'm all about the players, well, how come the players are saying something entirely different en masse? Like, as, as a unit, you need to address that and hopefully... When when I sit down with Alex Morello on Friday, he will address that because again, and listen, I'm not gonna. I'm, it's not like gonna, it's gonna be fire and brimstone. I, I haven't talked to this guy. I would have liked the opportunity to develop a relationship with him. I have said so many times how important it is for an owner of this franchise in this market to be a public face. I get he may be uncomfortable, so do some media training. Do whatever it takes to get yourself out there because this franchise, this fan base needed to see you, needed to hear from you, and now they're hearing all this stuff behind the scenes? I mean, you can't come with this messaging now when we have so much evidence to the contrary. You need to read the room. You need to, in some ways, you need to come clean. You need to acknowledge that. You need to address that. And that's that's part of what I hope to do in that interview. I'm not saying he's going to answer the question, but I'm going to ask it. Do you guys want to hear something that he said that will piss you off? We have uh, we have of course. we have Shane listening to the interview oh, for us and passing no. along quotes. Here's one. I, along with Bill Armstrong and my son, handpicked these individuals the last three to four years to see them moving on is gut wrenching. <laughs> and pick and pick which individuals? The players? Yeah. The players? Yeah. But that was- that I, I I said this I said this before you, you I guarantee fucking tee it sorry Dan's kids that if you put the roster if you put the Arizona Coyotes players in a lineup without their sweaters and their hell put them in their jerseys with their number on the front not their name <laughs> but their number on the front Alex Morello could not name one of them and I'm not I'm talking Clayton Keller and I, Junior could because he's around the office Senior couldn't name the players on the, hand picked them. You, you think Alex Manella doesn't go to his own rink? Do you think he's going to the University of Minnesota to watch Logan Cooley? Right in your mind. <laughs> well, do you think Alex Jr. – how much hockey has Alex Jr. played in his life? Do you, think, do you want him on your scouting staff? Hey, to, to, to even Let's suggest go. that they had a hand in picking these players. You, you're not a player evaluator. You know nothing about it. Let, how about giving a shout-out to your scouting yeah. staff? Huh? That's yeah, who handpicked nice these job, guys Alex. and then brought them to Bill Armstrong to evaluate because Bill Armstrong has two decades of experience in scouting. It was not the Morellos that handpicked these players. They may have signed off on it 
uh, probably not even in the draft, but you, maybe in free agents or trades. But they didn't handpick these players because they don't know anything about these players. Like, and listen, it's no different from me. I, I'm not a pl- player evaluator either, but I'm not selling myself as one. This, Come on. I knew, this one, I knew this one was going to set PDF. So, so here's, I'm going to tell you a story. I'm not going to tell you who told me or what it was, but I'm going to set the scene a little bit. This is at a, at a recent draft since the Morellos have owned the team. There was a group of staff, and it was not the scouts. Not the scouts. But a different group. I'm not going to single them out who it was, but it was not the scouts and it's not management. They were in the same city. They were at the same time where the draft was. And, and Morello goes by that group. Good luck today, guys. This is your Super Bowl. Go get us a good player. And they're all <laughs> looking around like, but we're not scouts. We got nothing to do with this. You have no idea who we are. You have no clue who we are or what we do for this organization. So to think he handpicked them, <laughs> it's, it's beyond comical. Oy. Like, like beyond Craig, and if uh, I tell you what, when he if he wants to pick players, you know what he's doing. Uh, how how much is he going to cost me? How much is he going <laughs> to? Now that I believe, oh, I'm, I'm not going to spend this one down for that guy or what? He, and that I would believe, hand picked, absolutely hilarious. Oh man! Anywho, really looking forward right. to your sit down with him, Craig. Um, <sighs> I need security. If I and by the way, him. if you have not read Craig's column from last night, yeah. he stayed up till the wee hours of the morning writing mm-hmm. it, and it is well worth your time. Go phnx.com. Did Frank Cervelli check your spelling? By the way, just checking because I know he's big on. I don't spelling. have an issue with spelling. Really, I suck at it. I asked my wife three times today before I you sent know a tweet. Do, text are you, are you aware of this service called Spell Check? <laughs> but you know it it's not on the Twitter. It's, they don't have that on the Twitter. On Twitter. <laughs> I love the way you say that. Old it's man not on the shouts Twitter. a cloud. Oh, my goodness. Um, by the way, everybody oh. watching live on YouTube or later on YouTube, please hit the like button on this video. We sincerely appreciate it. I want to share a note that was passed on to me um, from a NHL Hall of Famer. And I'll leave it at that. But here's the note. And it had me in tears today so i just wanted to pass it along to everybody Mm. listening it's it's about the coyotes moving obviously it's an emotional and difficult separation and loss coyotes were in phoenix a long time many many people passed into their orbit over time some lightly some deeply Mm. some for short periods and some for long periods they all have a memory a fun game or season or playoff highlights As I mentioned, I lived it with the Minnesota North Stars and I watched it with the Montreal Expos. The loss lessens over time, but doesn't ever seem to completely go away. There is an annual charity event in Montreal called Expo Fest. It's a huge success, sold out. A few former Expo players and managers attend. It's been 20 years since the Expos became the Nationals. The Twin Cities and the state of Minnesota recognized their loss. A new building and the wild arrived. Let's hope the same can happen in the desert. Wow. So that's amazing. From a yeah. NHL Hall of Famer. Thank you for that. That's How do I trans- transition from that to wind socks? You know, listen, Kitty we're a little there. delirious. Kitty, okay. Yeah, I have two hours of sleep. You have four hours of sleep. I got four. You I'm right four, there. Three, you got three, two. Three. Okay. Five, oh, okay. five, four, five, four, three, two. Yeah, that's interesting. In this so room. We were at uh, the Ice Den one more time today, obviously, for breakup day or the. The facility that's just a short golf cart ride away and leah and probably shane more than you were, it was shane. it was completely shane yeah, he... we're fixated on a windsock <laughs> on the top of the ice den hmm. and and shane brought it up basically asked for my thoughts on windsocks and i didn't really have any thoughts on windsocks but then it it started a conversation <laughs> it's an orange and white windsock on the top of the ice den so it's not all that interesting but we started thinking about you know, what if a windsock were the shape of an animal, <laughs> like a snake or Leah threw out an otter? And then I was on board because I thought. But then, but then, you know, the fish that have their face just on one side of them. Yes. yes. That I was thinking would be a good windsock. So, Petey, we wanted to ask you, <laughs> what are your thoughts on windsocks? There's See, almost a thousand people watching, by the way. I literally didn't sign up for this. For this shit. I didn't sign up for this shit. I, no? I, I, you, okay. you, they hired me to talk about four checks, power plays, what I thought <laughs> of, of hockey. Windsock. You want to know anything about Windsocks? 
the, have, you, have you been to Minnesota? Buddy, on the end of every freaking dock on Lake Bemidji, there's a <laughs> windsock, and most of them are shaped like go. a goddamn walleye. They're a fish. Look so at can, that. Yeah. See? So you can tell which way the wind is blowing before you leave the dock to go fishing for the day so you know where the fish are going to be in each inlet and so forth. So, yes, I've seen animal windsocks. They just happen to be fish. Some are northern pikes, but most of them in my lake are walleyes. So, yes, I'm all on board for windsocks. I'm all on board for animal windsocks. Uh -huh. Bring the windsocks. <laughs> but I'm especially in favor of Minnesota windsocks. Of, wow. course, of course you are. Would okay. you put one on your house, for instance? Because Shane is thinking about putting one on a house. So we, yeah, we probably need an adult. There's in the my winter. surprise face that Shane is putting a windsock on his house. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. All right. That's all oh, I've got on windsocks. Oh, I know that's why you're all here. That Glad is. we hashed that out. Me too. Me too. Great combo. Um, listen, it's been a long couple of days. It's been a long week and I will be drinking or peak beer tonight um, Just, yes i need i need yeah. one or two or three or four and i will be drinking responsibly at home of four peaks because four peaks is the official sponsor of all of us dealing with the coyotes relocation um and of course that is who will host our celebration next wednesday mm -hmm. so i can't wait to drink some four peaks with everybody there um and i We'll be drinking alone tonight. But, <laughs> um, Can we get some Four Peaks today? That's we so will, depressing. and I will get to okay. that at the okay, end. Good, good, um, good. Visit fourpeaks.com slash locator to find all your favorite beers and events and check out at Four Peaks Brew or at Four Peaks Pub to keep up with the latest. At Arizona's hometown brewery, you must be 21 or older to drink Four Peaks and please enjoy responsibly. And then swing over to Gila Resorts, River Resorts, and Casinos because we all know that we need to get away. The players are getting away. It's our turn. Time for a staycation at one of the wonderful Gila River Resorts and Casino Resorts like Wild Horse Pass. They have unbelievable, they are unprecedented level of entertainment and excitement that you won't find anywhere else in the desert. They've set a really hard bar. they got state-of-the-art gaming floor with slot machines, blackjack tables, table games, and Arizona's largest casino sports book. Unbelievable dining options. I'll be on the rooftop having a few cocktails at the Prime A Shula Steakhouse, and then I'll be catching a show down in the showroom at the Wild Horse Pass Casino. Check out everything. You do you at Gila River Resorts and Casinos. Visit play at Gila.com for much more details. Danielle, I feel like you'd want to say something. Yeah, can I just say say one thing? Yes. About windsocks? Um, <laughs> yeah, about windsocks. No, um, I'm really mad at you three. Oh. Uh -oh. Um, uh -oh. What do we do? There, there are three of us on air last night. Why was I the only one who cried? <laughs> You got. I feel like you left me yeah. out. Like high I saw and dry. that on your like, Twitter. I, I, of all the people, I'm the only one who cried, and I'm. I, I feel. I feel you. You, you left me hanging there. <laughs> but I have an answer, answer for this, Danielle. I do have an answer for this, Danielle, and and it's it's a logical one. Clearly, um, first of all, I saw that on Twitter, and I didn't respond because I was too tired. But I did see that, <laughs> and you're crying. But 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 you have to keep in mind the other three of you just become. A, a real hockey fan like you on the periphery you kind of like it but you you're in it now craig lee and i we've cried all of our tears out for this team they're gone like i cried yeah, but mine see, i thought i had done that ago. too no buddy. i was i was i was i mean oh boy, i cried me. i cried this morning you like, didn't i i also did you? did you didn't see me on my birthday oh boy oh well uh, your birthday was there and everything yeah. went down have time to cry this morning Talking yeah. about here. Yeah. Well, I'm sorry. We can stick around. I'm, I'm at the kitchen not crying. table when I was eating breakfast. Yeah. I, I yeah. am. Show of hands, who's cried on air with with uh, 1,300 people watching? Me? <laughs> no, anybody? <laughs> nope, just me. Your face That's wasn't good. on the screen, though. At least. Yeah. So. Speaking <laughs> of tears. Speaking yeah. of tears. Oh, well, we cried today. Oh. Oh, is this where well, you're going? I, I, oh. We're, we're gonna. We're, we have two two things okay. to talk about with, with tears because yes, that one choked me up. But. I happen to catch up with a, a certain head equipment manager quickly at the uh, – <laughs> Petey just took notice. Yeah, I was just going to check <laughs> my phone for new At the tweet. Ice Den today on break up day, Stan Wilson walked in, and, and we all saw the line of players lining up to, to hug him. And then we saw Stan dab his – Oh. his face with with a towel and Sorry. i said uh, i saw some tears <laughs> and he looked at me and he says no just sweat just sweat dabbing away sweat <laughs> <laughs> that grumpy old man he got an answer for everything doesn't he i can't wait i can't Go wait ahead, for Leah, but stand. somebody somebody did reduce us to tears yes, today and pd i'm sorry that you weren't there but we have yours waiting um we would like to s extend our deepest thank yous to the diehards who behind our back schemed and Charles and Chris um, put this all together and the diehards gave the four of us, uh, Craig, Petey, Danielle, and me, the most generous, the most thoughtful gifts as a thank you for 
everything with this show. Mm -hmm. And when I say gifts, I mean each of us got a basket with the most thoughtful, hand selected items from. They knew us. From they knew our individual yes, personalities. From snacks to beer, little tidbits to Four Peaks. our favorite <laughs> beer from Four Peaks, um, little coyote stuffed animal. Uh huh. Four Peaks gift cards, and collectively, the four of us have a amazing, amazing some Burroughs gift card that will have us a nice fiesta. Yeah, or at, as Danielle said, well, that will pay for me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but like from the bottom of our hearts, like Craig and I and Danielle were like moved to tears by the generosity, the thoughtfulness, wow. um, and the little card printed out with the names of every single person who contributed. And I mm. just like I thought I was, I was doing breathing exercises I, to keep myself from. Yeah, I thought that I was, was. Yeah, I thought yeah. I was blown away yesterday yeah. at the game talking to everybody. Um, this blew me away as well. So to our diehards, thank you. We love you. We appreciate you. Um, yeah. And more than you could ever know. I say this, too, because we saw a lot of them at the game last night and and, and they were thanking us. And, and it was constant. Thank you for what you do. Thank, I, and I from the bottom of my heart, thank you. Right back because at you. Yes. Because this, this is I do this when I sit around the kitchen table. I mean, I sit around and talk about hockey. This, I, I, that's what I like to do. And to have someone out there on the other side of this computer out there listening, and appreciating what I do, and, and listening to Craig and, and Leah sharing her stories and what her life has been like around this wonderful game, and people listening. Man, thank you, thank you so much for being out there and supporting us. Man, I, it just gives me chills. I, I can't express the gratitude I have. For for the people that are out there listening right now and for everybody that stopped by and said hello and everybody that told me their story and when they started being a fan of this Coyote franchise, don't stop. And you know where to find me, man. Uh, reach out, DM me. I'll see me at the rink. Stop up and say hi. And if, if you're too afraid, don't be because you, if you saw last night, no one was afraid. Stop up and say hi. I want to talk. I'll talk hockey anywhere. So thank you from the bottom of all three of our hearts and Danielle too. Thank you so much for all that you do for us. Yeah, I should also mention... That they did cleverly troll all of us yes. in those baskets. I, I, I'm not going to tell you what yours yeah, is, don't. Katie. You're, you're going to have to wait and see. But, you know, I dug down and lo and behold, there was there was a bottle of ketchup. I'll trade you your ketchup for my <laughs> fake maple syrup. Maple, I was going to say, Leah had to be fake maple syrup. I, Danielle, just, how did you get trolled? Uh, I got a picture frame, an empty picture frame for the photos I won't get to take of the coyotes. That is oh, so oh, 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 that's so That's cold blood. That's it's dirty. Cold, but at least yours is something you'll use, a picture but that frame. That is dirty. <laughs> That's, a, that's almost, that's almost, that's, 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 that got deep. Uh, and by the way, Sean was one of the contributors yes, and DP, he just sent us you. a super chat. You all changed my life forever. Love you. Love you a 4L. And by the way, we need to acknowledge Sean as well because he was yeah. part of this show yep. from for a year a and a half, time. a long time. Even Slinderella, right? Yep. Aaron Slindy, um, Sean, Danielle, like the show is nowhere without mm -hmm. Those guys so, miss you, buddy. Yeah, we really miss you, miss you, and we're everybody follow along with what chaos. They have a, a ton of stuff. Unbelievable, for the playoffs. some really fun stuff planned. So you'll yeah. want to follow along uh, with those guys. They do really, really, really great. Yeah, stuff. we have a national show. For yes. those people, keep asking. <laughs> we have a national NHL show, and, and we don't just have a show. It's a great show. It's a great watch show. these guys. Watch Sean, who's in the chat right now. Watch DJ Bean. Watch Pete Blackburn. It's so entertaining and if you PD if you have today. a full day to commit go back and watch their 24-hour marathon <laughs> they're doing a stream on not a 24-hour stream <laughs> but they're doing a stream on saturday that's going to be a while so uh yep. go, go check them out what yeah. chaos show on youtube and twitter good and leah, te leah teased it a little bit today so if you want if you want to if you want to jump onto the what chaos show for the first time today would be a great episode to do it because the arizona sports guy did get on air and told the story of the banner and by the way it was they were all in like they, yeah. they, he's new, the new operative at what chaos is now <laughs> Matt Jacobson. they're going to have him do some they said they've got plans for him and he uh, unfortunately I'm not sure if he understood where they were going with it but it was entertaining and then I got a chance to jump on and talk more Arizona Coyotes right after him so it was back to back Coyotes for about uh, almost a full 45 minutes of back to back Coyote talk and um there might be a story or two in there. So if you I'm, want to go check it out, jump on. I'm, I'm picturing a segment with Matt now where he, he he's looting somewhere. It is. <laughs> just, it's crazy. Send him out into a city. <laughs> if they need anything done illegal, they're going to him. 
<laughs> they, they are because so here's where it went craig remember when they, when when jersey was on that show yeah. and and he they were going to send him a desert night jersey oh i'll get you a desert night jersey that was that's when jersey left doesn't have it yet so nope. now they've got a new operative in his <laughs> it is. Hey, it. i like it uh, can you see him doing the, doing Tracking. the mission impossible hanging that right now on his way to salt lake city <laughs> Yeah. He's hanging from the rafters at, uh, at mullet. The rappels down. And the roof falls down. He lifts it right off and Jersey the and it goes back. back up. He just grabs it and the door was open all along. Oh, Matt. That's, oh, that's good funny. stuff. Oh. It was really good. So go listen to it. It was hilarious. Yeah. It was oh, really funny. So good. Um, Christian said, Nord's an Expo fan here. My best thoughts to you, Yotes fans. Long run. There's still hope for you. Go get them. Pack. Thank you from the Quebec fans and Windy City Hockey. I tip my hockey helmet to all you guys. Thank you so much. We appreciate you and we appreciate your support over the last week. Um, we appreciate everybody here watching. Again, hit the like button before you leave. And Gary Bettman press conference tomorrow, Friday, 11.30 a.m. Arizona time. So we will be there absolutely and we will let you all know what time our show will be after that in the afternoon most likely. So Stay tuned on the PHNX Sports YouTube channel. Hit the notification bell so you never miss when we go live. And make sure you're subscribed because, like I mentioned, we'll have all the breakup day video up there as well. All the video from last night's post game is already there. Plus, we have a special last ever walking and talking with Petey and who other than Shane Doan. Mm. Um, so that's coming later today as well. So lots to come on the PHNX Sports YouTube channel. And... Listen, we're we're still around for a little bit, so subscribe wherever you get your podcasts. Uh, follow along, like, follow. That's all I'll say. Anything else before we wrap up and no, get out of here? Just like, go, we're gonna go to bed now. I'm going to bed. Yeah, like, I might <laughs> just going sleep to work. here because I don't want to get work. Thanks. Um, oh, buddy. Man, oh, what buddy. what a 24 hours. What a eight days. Absolutely insane. Thank you all for the love and support. And we look forward to uh, talking to you all some more and seeing a bunch of you in Tucson on Saturday as well. Looking forward to that. But everybody get some rest. Uh, do something today that makes you happy. That makes you smile. Um, we're, we're all in it together till the very, very end. And I know this feels like the end, but there's still some stuff to hash out and we're going to do that. But everybody, you can follow us on Twitter at Leah Merrill, at Craig S. Morgan, at S. Peters Hockey, at Abra Danielle. Follow the show at PHNX underscore Coyotes. Enjoy the rest of your Thursday if you can. And we will see you all tomorrow. We all silly like the mayor. 